If your CFA exam is fast approaching and you're feeling nervous and anxious, don't worry, it's normal, let me help. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what to do in the last 30 days so you go into the exam feeling as confident as possible. If you're new here, I'm Harris, an investment banker and CFA charter holder who studied at Imperial College London. I completed the charter in 2023 after passing all three levels first time, scoring in the 90th percentile at all applicable levels. Okay, in this video, I'm going to step through how to approach reviews, practice questions, mocks, and mental preparation. Let's go. Okay, let's start with reviews. Now, if you're roughly 30 days out from the exam, I'm going to assume that you've covered the content at least once. If you haven't, that's not ideal, but here's what I advise. So I wouldn't recommend doing full lectures at this point because it will take you too long and it will stress you out. With the CFA, sometimes you have to pick your battles. The curriculum is far too big. You'll never know it all, so play to your strengths. For the topics you're comfortable with, move straight on to practice questions to reinforce the learning. More on this later. Otherwise, depending on the level you're sitting, check which topics have the highest weights as you'll need a solid understanding of these to pass the exam. So at level one, these are financial statement analysis, fixed income, equity, and most importantly, ethics. Ethics is important at all levels. And in fact, it can be the difference between passing and failing. So you need to make sure you're comfortable with this and you need to commit it to your short term memory. So ideally cover it close to the exam and get used to the way they phrase questions, which can be tricky. At level two, the weights are more even, but the topics that I just mentioned for level one, i.e. FSA, fixed income, equity, and ethics are still very important alongside portfolio management. These are all core and very likely to be tested. Level three is in its own category and it's more difficult to pick and choose, but asset allocation, portfolio construction, and currently the portfolio management pathway or from 2025, whatever pathway you choose are most likely to be tested. Now, whether you've covered the content already or are covering it for the first time, as I just mentioned, doing full lectures at this point is not viable. So hopefully you're using a prep provider that offers review videos. And if they do, make sure you use these these are roughly five to 20 minutes long. They cover the key themes and the most testable material. If you're not using a prep provider or yours doesn't offer review videos, doing reviews using the CFAI learning ecosystem is going to be difficult. So I'd highly recommend using IFT World's high yield package, which essentially provides condensed review videos and notes that focus on the most testable material and will be a lifesaver. The links to high yield packages for 2024 sittings are in the description below and 2025 links will follow soon. Prices range from 149 to 215 US dollars, which is a fraction of the cost of a reset. I've also secured you an exclusive 10% affiliate discount if you use my name, Harris, as a coupon at checkout. Now, finally on reviews, there are two ways you can approach them. If you were organized during your main study and noted down areas you're struggling with, start with these. Otherwise, apply the same logic as I just mentioned and identify the topics with the highest weight and start there. Try to get through two to five review videos a day, depending on the complexity and the length. Before I move on, there's lots of information out there about the CFA and many prep providers that teach the content. But despite that, more than 50% of people fail at each level. And for one main reason, time. Completing the CFA charter is hard because it takes a lot of time. There's three levels to do each with the vast curriculum all whilst working full time, which is brutal. If you don't have an effective strategy, you'll waste hundreds of hours and potentially thousands of dollars on resets. Now you could go through the pain of developing your own strategy, but this is risky and there's no guarantee you'll succeed, especially if you come from a non-finance background. Or you could let me help you. My Smash the CFA program condenses more than four years of CFA and careers experience into just a few hours and will save you time and money whilst increasing your chances of success. There's time and money that you can spend on things that really matter like hobbies, holidays and family. And when you succeed a six figure salary, access to top tier finance roles and an exclusive network are just some of the benefits you could enjoy. So in this program, you'll get my complete CFA studying masterclass that got me first time passes and 90th percentile scores. But I want to make this program as valuable as possible. So I'm throwing in a bunch of incredible bonuses for free including an onboarding call with me to understand your needs, which is worth $50, exclusive discounts on study materials, which will save you more than $450, career tips to help you leverage the charter and land your dream job worth $49, and access to a private Slack channel where you can chat in real time with me and other students so you can ask questions and importantly, build a network, which is priceless. All in all, that's more than $850 of value and it gets better. Early birds save 50%, but that's limited to 50 students only, so you'll need to be fast. And after all of that, if you take the program and you're not happy, I'll refund you 100% of your money, no questions asked. It's literally a no brainer. Your savings on the study materials alone will cover the cost of the program. You'll get tons of value, 
and it's a fraction of what you could earn as a CFA chart holder. So don't miss out. Find out more and join the waiting list below. Okay, next up is practice questions and these are really important and should take up the majority of your time during the last 30 days. It's no good just learning the content you need to apply and this is particularly important with the CFA because the questions can be tricky. They're often phrased awkwardly. The use of most or least likely in italics and stuff like that. So ultimately you need to know what to look out for otherwise you'll make silly mistakes also all levels have multiple choice questions which sounds like it will be easier but the cfa institute are smart they anticipate which mistakes you might make and the answer you would get and then list that as an option and then at level two and three the questions become much more applied so you have to go through multiple cognitive steps to get the answer the point here is you need to have solid exam technique and this comes with practice there's thousands of practice questions on the cfa learning ecosystem at all three levels so i would use these you don't need any others except for at level three with structured response maybe buy some additional packs do as many questions as you can and don't worry about using your notes or doing the questions under time pressure the reason is the questions in the question bank are designed to test and develop your understanding not replicate the exam as a result some questions are more involved they take longer but ultimately answering them will help you connect the dots don't worry if you get them wrong just learn from them generally if it takes more than five minutes to answer it's not going to come up in that form in the exam so don't stress also they don't update the question bank every year so if you're doing a question and you don't feel like you've studied that in the curriculum you're probably right so just move on after covering two to five review videos per day Focus on spending the rest of the time on practice questions. And if you've got too many reviews to do, focus on the most testable ones and spend more time doing practice questions. One final point, and I'll touch on this again in a second, but when you're doing questions, always read the question first, then the information. And this is particularly important at level two and three. The reason is if you read the information first, there's a bunch of extra detail in there that you don't need and you don't know what you're looking for. So then you'll read the question and then you'll go back and read the information again. And that just wastes time. Reading the question first means you know what you're looking for in the information and this will allow you to answer the questions much more efficiently. Now real quick, the CFA exams are highly time pressured and if you want to pass them, you need to master the CFA calculator. But most people don't know where to start. So I've put together a free guide with everything you need to answer questions quickly and accurately in the exam, saving you time and increasing your chances of success. It's totally free. Check out the link in the description. So let's move on to mocks. And this is where you need to get into exam mode. So you should do the mocks under time pressure to test whether your techniques actually work. I do the mocks in the last two weeks before your exam for a couple of reasons. Firstly, there's a limited number on the learning ecosystem, so you don't want to waste them. Now you could buy extra packs if you have plenty of time, so that might be worth exploring, but otherwise don't waste the mocks. And secondly, being in exam mode is mentally demanding, so it's better to lock in for a couple of weeks and keep your energy up versus dragging it out and burning out. Now I'd recommend leaving one day in between mocks to recover because the mocks are around five hours long and they're very mentally demanding. So you need that time to refresh. And also I'd leave three days at the end to mop up areas that you struggled with. In terms of technique, as I mentioned, always read the question first, then the information. This allows you to move faster through the exam. Also read the questions slowly because they use tricky wording. So make sure you're clear on what they're asking you before you read the information. If you can't answer a question immediately, don't waste time, flag and move on. Get as many done as you can and then revisit the ones you struggle with. And now you'll have less time pressure so you can think more clearly. And at level three, multiple choice and structured response questions are now mixed, which is a great thing. Do multiple choice questions first because you can do them more quickly. Then you can use the time you saved on the structured response, which tend to be more demanding. Once you've done the mocks, do a debrief. Look at what you got wrong, check the mark scheme, and then make a note to revisit the curriculum if it still doesn't make sense. In terms of good scores, at level one, anything above 75% in the marks is a good score. At level two, around 70%, and at level three, around 65%. This is just a guide. The pass mark at each level varies depending on the cohort, but as I said, I think these are good marks. Generally, the mocks tend to be harder than the exams. The exam questions tend to be more direct and less ambiguous. So the scores that I've just mentioned would probably be okay. Just a quick note to say if you like this kind of content and you find it valuable, consider hitting like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see anything else, drop a comment below. Finally, let's cover mental preparation. If you've done everything you can to prepare and the exam is close, it's time to get in the right headspace. Honestly, you can undo everything that I've just covered if you're not calm and composed on the day. So here's a few tips to achieve this. Firstly, stop studying by 5 p.m. on the day before. If you don't know it by then, you won't know it. Being sharp and rested is a lot more valuable than a few additional hours of cramming. Then spend the evening relaxing, start with a walk, clear your mind, refresh, speak positively to yourself and trust your preparation. Then come home 
have a nice meal and a warm shower and get ready for bed. Go to bed early because your mind is going to be racing. So it's going to be very difficult to get a high quality sleep anyway. But if you go to bed early, you give yourself as long as possible to rest. Then on the morning of the exam, start the day right. Get up, refresh and move the body to get the blood flowing. I'd recommend limiting liquids and coffee because you'll need to pee and you don't want to waste time in the exam in the toilet. And otherwise focus on light and high energy foods like fruit and yogurt. Don't eat a big breakfast because you're going to feel sluggish. Do not cram in more revision. I can't stress this enough. You'll just clog up your brain. You'll identify gaps in your knowledge, which will stress you. And otherwise you'll just reduce your sharpness ahead of the exam. I'd recommend reviewing formulas only. It definitely helps to have seen these recently. So use a formula sheet. Before the exam, control your breathing and thus your anxiety. It's important you go in there and are calm and composed, settle in and get cracking. Finally, in that 20 to 30 minute break between the two exam sessions, do not cram more. You really need that break. Those sessions are very intense. So take the opportunity to get outside, have a banana or something, or maybe a caffeine tablet, get your energy levels back up. But again, don't have too many liquids because you don't want to go to the toilet. So keep it light and smash the final session. There you have it. If you do exactly that in the last 30 days, you stand the best possible chance of smashing the exam. If you like this video, then you're going to love these two on the screen. Thanks for your time and see you in the next video.